Good evening, good evening, and good evening. It has been all go since Friday. Free Fire came out and so did Ghost in the Shell. And both of these are still playing Odeon cinemas across the country. So this video is here today to give you a heads up if you're curious about either or both of these films. Here's the first one, Ghost in the Shell. I have been watching you. You have to remember it. I'm sure that most of you know that Ghost in the Shell is based on the Japanese manga. It was not created by Hollywood. So the movie starts with Scarlett Johansson being created. Now this like, bears some kind of similarities, I thought, to Robocop, because all that's left to her is a brain. And it's, that happened to Alex Murphy, didn't it, as well, in um, Robocop. And also like Robocop, Scarlett Johansson is the first of her kind, not actually Scarlett Johansson, the character she's playing, Major. So Major is the first of her kind, she's a cyber-enhanced human, I think. You're gonna have to check the online facts for this one. So anyway, she's part of this task force called Section 9, and Section 9 are trying to find this new terrorist who um, is threatening the organization that has created Major, which is pretty much the first half of the story. I will find him. And I will kill him. Yes, first of all, I have to say, I watched it in IMAX. I watched it in 3D. I just think all movies from now on should be made in IMAX. I just love it. I've got like a new addiction in my life. It's called IMAX. What, right, bruv, do you want to jack up with some IMAX tonight? Boom! In it, bruv, get some 3D with that as well. As I said, the opening sequence is the shell moment. She's created in that first opening title sequence. It's very impressive, it looks really good. I love the futuristic world that was created. I felt the landscapes were all just really visually stunning. I guess they're like somewhat how it looked. It was like a cross between Blade Runner and The Matrix. The first time it looked really great. There was a lot of action in there. The only thing I think that let it down was the dialogue. I felt the dialogue was just like, it's just too, just too narrative really. But I suppose that can be excused because most of them meant to be like, cyborgs or robots or they're meant to have implants they're not meant they're meant to be a bit robotic so i don't know if it was meant to sound that way but if it did then i apologize when it got to the halfway point there's this nice little twist in the middle and it was from the halfway point that i really got thrown into the story i got i really liked it and i just really it just kept me intrigued till the end after that i think one of my favorite performances in the film was from julia binoche is it i, I don't know how you pronounce the name i think it's i think it's binoche juliette binoche i think she's I think she's done a really good performance through the film. I really liked her. And again, I think with the second half, it's like whatever you read in any synopsis out there or any premise out there, it's that is the first half, but the second half kind of isn't that, where it just throws you off the path what you think you're following. So yeah, I would say if you like Blade Runner, if you like The Matrix, if you like Robocop, go and see this one. They created me, but they cannot control me. So that is one review done and dusted. Coming soon, our free fire review, so look out for that one. Have a lovely evening, have a lovely Tuesday, and that's all for Monday.